Okay, so in this video, we're going to walk through finding uh, the solution to a differential equation using Laplace transforms. Now, the thing about Laplace transforms is that we have to have the differential equation and we have to have initial conditions. If we and they have to be specifically at zero. Um, if they're not at zero, then we have to do transformations in order to solve it. Um, if we don't have any initial conditions, we can't use this method. Um, so we have, but this is a very common situation where we have the equation and the initial conditions. And so in order to uh, do the Laplace transforms, we're going to need some basic um, Laplace transforms formulas. Um, in this case, we're going to need the ones for finding the Laplace transform of a function and its derivatives. So we don't know what y of t is, so we're just going to use notation. But in terms of the Laplace transform of y, which we're trying to solve for, um, the derivative is going to be given by s times y of s minus the initial condition at 0. And then the second derivative is going to be s squared y of s minus s times the initial first initial condition minus the second initial condition. And there is a succession here of if we had y triple prime, we would have s cubed times y of s, and then we'd have s squared times y of 0, and then we'd have s times y prime of 0, and then we'd just have y double prime of 0 as the last term, and so forth. Um, these formulas often appear in Laplace transform tables. Uh, if they're not in yours, you may need to remember them. Um, the other uh, transformation that we're going to need is the exponential function. And I have that one written down here because we're going to use it several times. Um, and this is just a, one of the basic formulas. e to the at becomes 1 over s minus a. All right, so going back to our beginning problem, we need to convert this differential equation and Laplace transform the whole thing. So our y double prime is going to become this expression, s squared y of s, and then s times y of 0. But y of 0 here is given to be 1. So that's y of 0. And then minus y prime of 0, well, y prime of 0 is 0. And so that goes there. And then minus 3y prime, so minus 3. And then y prime is this expression right here. And that goes in here with, again, 1 equal y of 0. And then plus 2y, so the transform of that is just 2y of s. And then e to the 3t becomes 1 over s minus 3 using our exponential rule. And now we just need to do some simplification in order to solve for y of s. So we're going to distribute... Um, and so I've collected the y of s terms here out front. So s squared y of s, and then minus 3s y of s, that goes here, and then plus 2y of s. And then this is just minus s, which is here. And this is minus 3 times minus 1, which gives me plus 3. And then the right side has not changed. And if I factor out y of s from these initial terms, I get s squared minus 3s plus 2, that's this expression, all times y of s. And I can move the plus s and the minus 3 over to the other side of the equation. Now, once this is over here, I need everything in terms of a common denominator um, so that I can, I can solve it later. So I'm going to first find a common denominator on this side. So what I did was I multiplied this expression by s minus 3. So s minus 3 over s minus 3. And if I FOIL this out, I get this. And now I can add the fractions together. And so I get s squared minus 6x s plus 10 with just the common denominator of s minus 3. And now I'm in, in a position where I can divide out this thing that's multiplying y of s in order to solve for y of s. And so 
I get this numerator and then the old denominator I had before divided by this new expression. And this um, thing here, it factors out into s minus 2 and s minus 1. Now, I don't have any formulas that have this form in my Laplace transform table. And so I need to apply partial fractions in order to split this up into simple exponentials that I can then apply my inverse Laplace transform to. And so recall that for partial fractions, I take each of my linear factors and I set them up as A over the first factor and B over the second factor and C over the third factor. Um, and then I need to find an expression that is equivalent to this one over here. And so that means I need to find a common denominator. Now, A already has S minus 3 in the denominator and it needs S minus 2 and S minus 1. And then B has S minus 2, but it needs S minus 3 and S minus 1. And then C, this expression has S minus 1, and it needs S minus 3 and S minus 2 in order to make the denominator have all three factors. And so then I, I foiled out my pairs of factors. So s minus 2, s minus 1 is our s squared minus 3s plus 2. s minus 3 times s minus 1, foil that out, you get s squared minus 4s plus 3. And if you foil out s minus 3 and s minus 2, you get s squared minus 5s plus 6. And then finally, we can distribute the a through this parentheses, the b through here, and the c through here. And so a s squared, a times 3s, and a times 2, and then b times s squared times negative 4s, and then b times 3, and then c times s squared, and c times negative 5s, and then c times 6. And this expression has to be equal to this one that we started with. And so for partial fractions, we then collect the coefficients of each of the terms on both sides of the equation and set them equal to each other. So here, the s squared terms on the left side are a, b, and c, a plus b plus c, but on this side, it's just 1. On the s terms, we have negative 3a. We have negative 4b and negative 5c. And on this side of the equation, we have negative 6. And then the constant terms, 2a, 3b, and 6c. And on this side of the equation, 10. And so what I did to solve this was I, I used... Um, matrix operations in my calculator. I threw this in a little matrix. I let the calculator solve it. Um, this can be done by hand, although it's not my favorite thing in the world to do. But if you, um, if you solve this by any means, either by hand or using technology, you end up with the following solutions. A is 1 half, B is negative 2, and C is 5 over 2. And so our initial expression with the three factors in the denominator can be separated into three separate terms, uh, 1 half over s minus 3, negative 2 over s minus 2, and 5 halves over s minus 1. And then to finish the problem out, we need to convert back to y, back to a function of t. And so then we're going to use this Laplace transform again, this exponential one that we used before. We're going to use it to inverse Laplace transform these three expressions. And so the, the coefficient just comes out. That's the 1 half. And the denominator tells us this is e to the a t, where a is 3. So this is e to the 3 t. Then minus 2 is our coefficient. And this part tells us e to the 2 t. And then our coefficient 
and then this part tells us e to the t. And so this is a particular solution um, using the initial conditions and the solving for the non-homogeneous portion of the function to solve the differential equation that we had at the top. And you should be able to double check this by taking your, three de your two derivatives and plugging them in and showing that you do in fact get e to the 3t left when you're finished. And you'll notice that um, the s minus 2 and s minus 1 factors come from the homogeneous solution. Um, these were the factors for the characteristic equation that we would have gotten from up here. Uh, in fact, this thing that you factor out is the characteristic equation. And what you end up with is these are the two pieces of the homogeneous solution, and this is the piece that produces the non-homogeneous component.